Hi everybody, it's Sally from Sally Stampers. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you're all well. Today I'm bringing you my gleaming Christmas box. As you can see, it's beautiful. It's got the Christmas, um, wait a minute, brightly gleaming DSP. Um, it's a handy sized little box. It's four by four, um, which is that about 10 by 10, I think in centimeters, yeah. Um, and I just love making gift boxes like this for Christmas presents because, um, you know, I I don't mind wrapping presents, but I have more fun making boxes and gift bags for presents. So this one is a slightly different version to the one I actually made last year um, with the, and ironically, the stamp set I'm actually using, where's it, it's gone, is First Frost. Um, and I don't know if you remember the DSP that came with it last year. Um, it was sort of a mint macaron and it had a silvery pearlized effect to it. It was beautiful. And I actually used that paper, which is quite funny as I've used that sentiment from that stamp set. Um, but it was a slightly smaller box, so I've made it a bit bigger um, and obviously used this beautiful, beautiful copper paper. Um, so I'll show you how to make it. It is really simple. So, unfortunately, my DSP's got a little crease there, but you need a sheet of 12 by 12. So I've gone with very vanilla just as a nice base. Um, and I'm hoping that that actually will end up being the bit that I cut off so you won't see it. So, um, so I'm starting off with 12 by 12, as I said, and um, I'm going to score, so it's, and it's actually 30 by 30 centimetres, so if you do have the 30.5, it makes it a little bit easier if you just trim a fraction off. So we're going with 12 by 12, we're going to score at 4 inches and 8 inches, which is 10 and 20 centimetres, we're going to rotate and we're going to score the same again, so 4 and 8 inches. So 10 and 20 centimetres again. And that's the simplest part of that. We're then going to fold and burnish all of these score lines. It's always hard when you have 12 by 12 because you can't get it all on the page. So I'm just going to go around, fold and burnish all of them. And then what I want to do when I cut these ones, again I do the um, each one going a different way just so that it doesn't make one side particularly thicker. Um, so I'm literally going to start in one corner, going to cut down there and then I'm going to cut my wedges away. Okay. If you wanted to, you could cut some off. I'm not particularly bothered because when it folds up, it will just stick, sit like that. But you might want to just shave a little bit off. You don't need to take much off, maybe just that amount. And then where I've cut that one, I'm going to rotate and cut this way. So you have seen me do these ones before. off and then rotate again and repeat and it's really simple. I like the fact that as well that I'm using very vanilla because it's a colour that I don't really use a lot of which is a shame because it is just as um, just as user friendly as the Whisper White. Okay so last one those wedges and this one and then this one and you may have noticed that my dogs are very quiet just lately um, as you know I do my filming in bulk so I do sort of three four maybe five videos at a time um, I actually took them on a really long walk this morning so that they would be asleep so uh, that's a plus so I think I might have to do that more often now when I start to take them for a walk okay uh, when I have to film rather okay so um 
I've got my snail, I've got my panels here to put on the sides. Um, the cardstock panels are three and three quarters by three and three quarters, which is nine and a half by nine and a half. And then my DSP layers are three and a half by three and a half, which is nine by nine. So we're just going to quickly run through and stick all of these onto cardstock. And again, I'm, as you can see, that I'm using the copper side because it is so pretty. And you just need four of these. In fact, you actually need five because you use one on the lid. So I'm just going to whiz that on there. Last one. Again, you can use your wet glue, you can use tear and tape, double-sided tape, whichever. And then, again, just going to stick these on the sides here. All four sides. As I said, it is a really simple, simple one to make. And also really pretty. So that one on there, and then the last one on this side. And then again, so again you can either use tear and tape, um, wet glue, whatever. I'm just going to use snail for today because I do feel that this will work just as well. And then I'm literally just going to start, oh no, 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 please don't, no, 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 oops, that ripped, oh dear. So, stick down, just going to work my way round, doing the sides, don't worry about the little rip, I will sort that later, stick all the sides together, and then and press them down and just give them all a press because I am using snail so it just needs that extra bit so there's your pretty pretty box isn't that gorgeous that DSP is stunning okay so we now need to make the lid which I've just realized don't even have my cardstock for which is madness so I'm just going to grab some here so your lid you will need a piece of cardstock that is six by six which I am now putting here, or is in my notes a um, 15 by 15 centimetres. And then we are going to score all four sides at one inch, which is 2.5 centimetres. Don't forget your shim, otherwise your lid won't fit properly. So one inch, all four sides, 2.5 centimetres with a shim. Okay, so again, fold and burnish those four lines. And then we're just going to do the corners the traditional way. You don't need to switch these round because there's no difference in the thickness or the you know the size of them. That last one. Okay, so that's those done, and then exactly the same size layer again for the lid. So cardstock is three and three quarters by three and three quarters, which is nine point five by 9.5 and then the DSP is three and a half by three and a half which is nine centimeters okay and then as you know I'm going to add some adhesive to 
little tabs at the side. And oh crumbs, can't pick anything up today. And then just pop those under there. Same on the other side and there. And then obviously your lid will just sit. And I'm just being mindful because I obviously have this just a little bit of extra cardstock and DSP there. But there's my lid on. Pretty, pretty. So for your um, handle, I have a strip of cardstock that is 10 and a half by three quarters of an inch. So that's 27 by two centimeters. And then my DSP is 10 and a half by half, which is 27 by one and a half centimeters. Run my uh, snail all the way down. And then it does actually, it's the same length. So as long as you've got it straight at the bottom and equal, it will all fit nicely. And then I actually just used my bone folder to just assist it in curling. And because this is a bit thicker and stronger, I am actually gonna use my tear and tape. So I'm just gonna put one bit across there. What am I doing? Honestly, I'm all fingers and thumbs today. And then another bit above it, just because it needs that thickness. And then I do exactly the same on the other end. So that there. And then another one just above it. Just there. And then take the backing off. This is a tricky bit when it's right on the edge. If you can just find a piece that's willing to lift you'd be okay and then obviously de deciding on which is going to be your front this is pretty so I'm going to go with this being the front so you can measure or if like me you're just going to wing it and eyeball it and then exactly the same this side eyeball it wing it stick it <laughs> So there's my handle, isn't it just gorgeous? So I then used the um, classic weave ribbon with the vanilla and copper and I just made a bow. So I'm just gonna have a little play around with this just to make sure it's the right way etc and then again just trim those tails there and there and then I've just literally used a glue dot on there and popped it on this part that's annoying me now it's twisted again Oops. And then I just want to use my tool here just to open up those loops slightly. And then that bow isn't sitting anywhere near as nicely as the last one. And then the last piece of the puzzle is my uh, everyday label punch that I've used. In fact, I've got a smaller piece of vanilla here. So I'm just gonna punch that out 
and then I have my first frost stamp set with that lovely sentiment and then I want my embossing buddy and emboss it in copper just to tie that all in together grab my Versamark whoops Get that a little clean and then I have my copper embossing pad here and then obviously just very carefully pick this up because you don't want to smudge or touch that bursa mark. Give it a little tap to clear the excess off and then wherever my heat tool is I'm going to apologise for the clatter and bang because it's underneath my scoreboard now. And here it is and because this is um, obviously if you wanted to punch it uh, after you've heat embossed it that's fine I just use one of my little mini pegs to hold it so that my hand doesn't get too hot when I heat it up and then we're just going to heat emboss that gorgeous sentiment and I can see it's just starting to take embossing there pop it down for a second and then I just need some dimensionals on the back just to hold it in place and then I just pop this on the front just there oops there we go and then I'm going to take the lid off just so as I can press those dimensionals down. Just watch this ribbon when you pop your lid back on because it gets all tangled. There we go. And there is my gleaming Christmas boxes. Hope you like them. Which is your favourite? I can't tell either. They're both gorgeous. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you all again soon. Bye.